So, you want to learn how to kick like Sanji, huh? What if I told you I found out three different ways to become an insane fighter just like your favorite anime character? And what's crazy is these three things will not only change your kicks, but your entire life as well. I mean, imagine trying to fight a dude who can move like this. You wouldn't do it, right? So today, I want to focus on Sanji and break down how he kicks and specifically the 540 kick and hyper variations. Also, you can learn how to do the same thing just like I did. And the first thing you need to know before I talk about anything else is your cheat setup. Now I know exactly what you just said inside of your head. What is that? I want you to imagine a table. Now what would happen if I was to just knock one of the legs off of that table? It's not a table anymore, is it? No matter how hard you try to make that table stand again, it just won't. That table needs that extra leg for support, and if it doesn't have it, well, it just doesn't function correctly anymore. When it comes to being able to kick like Sanji, your cheat setup is that extra leg. Without a good and strong cheat setup, every single time you try to do this kick, you will fail, without question. And that's actually what happened to me when I was first trying it out. See, I had just figured out how to do a tornado kick. If you want to learn that, click on this video here. And at the time, I was so hyped and astounded. I really wanted to move on to the next step. So I tried as hard as I could to do a 540 kick. I jumped straight up in the air and lifted my leg over my right as I tried my hardest to land safely. And yeah, <laughs> you can probably guess what happened next. I fell right into the ground face first. I learned some very important knowledge about this kick that day. So unless you enjoy falling face first, listen. The first thing you need to do is step forward with your front leg and then follow up with the back leg. And as you're doing this, move your arms in the same direction that you are twisting. And as you turn around, jump upward with all your might and bring your entire body upwards in this like super giant hoop motion. And I want you to note, this step is extremely important because like I said earlier, it is the literal foundation for the rest of the kick. You want your entire body to be moving as much as it can in that upwards direction. And with the 540 kick, you're gonna land on the same leg that you kicked with. So you're gonna kick, but you're gonna land on that same leg that you already jumped off of. So in order to do that, you're gonna need a lot of power, you're gonna need a lot of height, and you're gonna need a lot of momentum. So make sure that you do that cheat setup correctly. So after I face planted into the ground, I looked up and heard a voice. That voice told me, Listen here, you pathetic excuse for a warrior. How do you expect to complete the kick if you don't raise your knees? Raise your knees! And that's when it came to me. The voice was right, but I needed somebody to sit down and discuss with to truly figure it out before I tried it again. I didn't want to accidentally hurt myself and break my leg or something worse. So I did Shadow Clone Jutsu and sat down to have a discussion to try to figure it out. Wait, so you heard that voice too, right? He said something about raising your knees? <laughs> yeah, and he was right. Let me explain. I want you to look at these two videos of this kick and tell me which one looks better. Uh, okay. It looks like the left one is better. Exactly. And you want to know why? Because in the left one, I raised my knee as high as I possibly could. See, this kick is one of those moves that looks a lot harder than it really is, but you have to think about it differently than how most people think about it. You're not trying to force your kicking leg over your other leg when you do this kick. It's more so trying to push your back leg under your kicking leg and just letting it travel through its whole motion. Uh. That's why raising your knee as high as you can is so important. You're just trying to land on the leg that you kicked with. You're not trying to force it over. Oh, I see now. Okay. You know what? Let, let, let me try it again. And then I got up and tried to do the kick again. And you could probably guess what happened this time, right? So after that, I learned a very important lesson when it comes to basically all kicks. Raise your knee. When you do a 540 kick, the, the number one problem that a lot of people have when they do it is that they don't raise their knee. They try, they almost, it's almost like they try to force it because they think, they think that they need to force their kicking leg over their other leg. So they try to do it and then they do it and they, they do this weird like forcing thing, but they don't think about the technique. If you want to make, if you want to cut the, the amount of effort you need to land the kick in half, raise your knee. I want you to get up out of your chair right now and do something. Stand upwards and spin vertically, but try to keep your body in the same place. I'll try it with you. Keep my upper body in the exact same position. Watch, watch. <laughs> and it's not working. You want to know why? Because you, if you want to spin, you need to use this core area of your body, this chest. You need to turn that as well. So let me ask you a question. I want to ask y'all a question real quick. So the question I want to ask you in your head is if you have to turn your upper body while you spin vertically, why wouldn't you have to spin your upper body while you're trying to do this kick? This is a mistake I see a lot of people do when they try to 540 kick. They, they will try their hardest to force their kicking leg 
over their back leg, but they'll completely ignore the fact that their upper body is staying in the exact same position. Your upper body needs to turn with your kicking leg. As long as you keep that and everything else we went over in mind, you should be able to do this kick somewhat successfully and finally kick like Sanji. So if you reach this point of the video, you should probably be able to at least somewhat be able to do this kick. But if not, then you probably missed the fact that this kick is pretty advanced. I'm sure you can tell just by looking at me do it, but this is not a kick for beginners. If you happen to be somebody who is just starting out, you need to understand the tornado kick before you even attempt this move. This is extremely important because you could literally break your legs and hurt yourself badly if you don't understand the basics. So click on this video right here to learn how to do the easier version of this kick.